Hello and welcome back. Today we will continue our Victoria 3 tutorial series and what we are going to talk about is the government wages death spiral. And so you might have noticed this in some of your games where government wages seems to just rapidly increase out of the blue when you're not adding construction, you're not adding government administrations. It doesn't seem to make sense. Why is government uh, wages getting so expensive kind of out of nowhere? And the answer is the normal wage. And so what the normal wage is, is the average wage across all of your incorporated states. It does not include unincorporated states. And so it will include states in, let's say, Kanto, which for Japan here is incorporated, it's the capital. But it will not include Beijing, which is not incorporated, although it's almost incorporated. And so what this means is, is that as, generally speaking, a good proxy for your normal wage is just kind of looking at your standard of living, but this is poor in one respect in that it actually doesn't denote wages uh, in a direct way. It denotes wages applied by some modifiers. Um, if you take a look in your population tab, you will see that your SOL will go up. They have this handy dandy excess thing now. Your SOL will go up as long as the combined total of taxes and needs um, is less than what the current SOL demands, your SOL will continuously go up. And what this means is that um, your standard of living is going to be when you have really high taxes, your standard of living will be depressed relative to the wage. And when you have really low taxes, your standard of living will be a much higher relative to the wage. And so it's not a direct reflection of wage, but it is a reflection of wage once you take into consideration the fact that it is deeply affected by your tax rate. And so what happens when you go in this death spiral is when your normal wage just increases a huge amount, which is what we experienced here in Japan. You could notice if you look at our gold reserves thing, we were doing kind of pretty sitting on a surplus looking to increase construction and then thunk. We went down and we had to do a lot of damage control in order to try and kind of stall this out until we could build through it. And so well, what was the driver of this? The driver was running out of peasants. If we take a look here, that average standard of living is a pretty good metric for tracking wage. Again, as we mentioned, it's not perfect, but it's pretty flat, slowly increasing. This is kind of what you want your standard of living to do. And then you notice here it spikes up. This is around when we ran out of peasants. And so as you run out of peasants, there's less labor available in the market, and there's significantly less labor available in the market. It's an interesting inflection point. And this labor running out of the market um, means that they are going to compete for labor, which drives up the price of labor, which has good effects and bad effects. One of the bad effects, as we're seeing here, is it increases government wages. And so we have this kind of, uh, it's like a hose that was unkinked. Uh, the hose was on for some time, it gets unkinked, and suddenly we have this flood of extra expenses that we were not necessarily ready to deal with. Um, it's not necessarily bad that we have high government or a lot of government wages, but we just don't quite have the income to kind of match that and so this kind of raises the question okay if we have a death spiral that's caused you know by this increase in standard or this increase in wage notably not an increase in standard of living the 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 normal wage it's uh I, it's opaquely represented to you i would re i really wish there was a second number just for normal wage right here but it is what it is and so um we just have this huge crank up. And so how do we solve this? Well, the first way you might want to solve this is by increasing taxes, which you can solve, you know, this part by increasing taxes. But what you really need to do is you need to get more people. And so when you increase taxes, what happens is you will drive down the standard of living, but you will be driving down the standard of living by increasing this tax number such that you are going to be running these people into the negative and so they will decrease in standard of living the taxes plus the needs uh, will exceed a hundred percent and so they will be running a deficit which will drive down the standard of living but this is not decreasing their wages unfortunately which is what you really need to, to reduce the government wages and so what you instead need is more pops and so as a temporary solution taxing uh, will be good. But what we noticed here in this Japan run was that as you increase taxes, you're actually going to decrease migration attraction because you're decreasing the standard of living and standard of living is how migration attraction is calculated. If we take a look here, we will see that standard of living applies the base rate and then it's modified by stuff like employment, available employment, unemployment, and then percentages for various things. And so when we decrease the standard of living without decreasing the normal wage, 
then we don't actually encourage migration, but we will be in getting in more taxes. So it does band-aid the problem, you know, a little bit. But for the most part, you don't want to actually increase taxes um, if you can avoid it. Uh, you will need to do it if you're unrecognized. You really don't want to be running a deficit if you're unrecognized. This is just something to keep in mind uh, because you pay way, way, way more on the interest. Okay, so how do we get more pops? And the the unfortunate answer is usually you do it proactively by expanding a customs union so that you're by having a really large customs union from whom you can siphon off pops you tend to smooth out this standard of living growth rate uh, quite a bit because you have pops coming in the pops uh decrease the competition for labor which means that this will not be up going up so volatilely which means that your normal wage will not increase so volatilely and so this is one way of going about things and this is kind of the most consistent and good way you can also conquer states which is what we did here in japan in response to this we conquered this korean state and we conquered this state here in beijing mainly looking to just get a huge chunk of population we have been siphoning off migrants they started out with some 17 million and we've been siphoning off which has been blunting it because if we take a look at the standard of living this dip here was when we conquered all these chinese states now this isn't decreasing the normal wage yet this bump down this standard of living tracks all of the countries or all of the states in our country and it doesn't track remember standard of living or sorry the normal wage is calculated entirely based on incorporated states so this doesn't so help solve the problem yet but since we accept the pops in china this means that they can migrate and this migration has been pretty important because some two million pops have migrated from here and maybe one million from here or half a million and so this has blunted quite a bit you know this uh uh, this effect here uh, in terms of decreasing the normal wage. Um, what we will see here is that we can we are really close to incorporation. Now, once it's incorporated, then it will be calculated towards the normal wage. And now, keeping in mind that it is not a perfect representation of wage, this has a standard of living of 14 relative to like 2021 in all of our incorporated states. When this finishes incorporating, what we should see here is a pretty sharp decrease in government wages. Or maybe not super sharp, but I imagine it gets under 800,000. And this is kind of an illustration of the idea how incorporating countries is going to be another effective way to reduce the normal wage, especially if they're just newly acquired. Because there's not a whole bunch of industry built up here. Or, well, there is now. But there wasn't a whole bunch of industry built up here when we got it. We built up a bunch of industry here. We're working on building up a bunch of industry. But it's not like a place that you've had for a while that you incorporate. The The wages are still overall depressed. If they have been in the, uh, our country for a while, they would not be this low. And so we will take an unpause. We will watch this. And we will watch this. Now, we're keeping an eye on the government wages here. And seeing how they affect, I imagine that it will need a Monday rollover here in order to kind of fully appreciate this, but now we are incorporated. So now it's going to be calculated, used to calculate the government wage. We actually probably need to re-highlight and look at this. It's a drop in 50,000. And this 50,000 is dropped entirely because, uh, not because we have less gov government stuff we're paying for, no. This drop in 50,000 is a result of this now being incorporated and being used to calculate in the normal wage. And so, this is just something to keep in mind. Um, and so what the best practice or what the strategy is, is you want to proactively be aware of the fact that you're running out of peasants. When you run out of peasants, you're probably going to have this huge uptick in standard of living. When this happens, it's probably going to cause a really uncomfortable spiral in government wages that will not be easy to address by just increasing taxes. It will be sticky uh, because by increasing taxes, you do not decrease the normal wage. You just decrease standard of living, which hurts migration, which hurts people from coming into your country to compete for the labor, which is going to cause the standard of living to actually climb uh, or it's going to cause the normal wage to even climb more. Um, and so it's uh, a temporary solution. You can do taxes. You want to proactively expand your customs union, proactively be aware of 
the need for more pops in order to kind of keep this depressed or at least smooth uh, in terms of the increase. You don't want really sharp upticks in standard of living, which is, again, just to reiterate, this is a good proxy for talking about normal wage, but it is not actually referring to wages because it is modifying stuff here. So if we just take a quick look here, we crease this all the way, we will cause standard of living to fall. If we just wait a little bit, we will see they're now all in a deficit. This is going to cause standard of living to fall, but it's not decreasing the wages they're getting paid. It is just it's causing a deficit in between, you know, between their needs and their taxes. They can't afford this level of standard of living. And so it's going to come down and their standard of living will drop without the normal wage dropping. Another thing you can do is you can look to conquer high population states that you could incorporate in two to five years, which is what we did here as Japan, specifically going after Beijing. Of course, there is also the Forbidden City, which is quite a good building. But we were mainly looking for the pops here. We got the pops and we decreased the normal wage uh, we just had this nice little decrease here and we can continue trying to do this taking more Xing states and this sort of stuff we are also notably we take states even if you don't incorporate them it can be still quite powerful if you have multiculturalism just working them into the market we're looking at Shang Zi here we're gonna take a look at their population because I keep forgetting what I'm looking for we they are in our market and we're siphoning off pops and so proactively expand the market conquer states if you need to incorporating states with lower uh standard of living or lower wages remember standard of living is just a proxy for wages that's not a very good proxy um this will cause also the government uh, uh wages to go down but it's mainly a proactive thing and so you have to be able to respond to this uh, this sort of spiral by just working as hard as you can to get more pops into your country, which unfortunately is increasing taxes is just a band-aid that's not going to solve the problem um you can also size down you know universities or other government owned buildings and this type of thing uh but anyways i hope this helps hopefully you avoid one of these spirals in the future and have a good one oh feel free to like comment subscribe etc